I got that drink in my cup. Yo, this beer has a lot to do with a celebrity. So we gotta flip the script and play the appropriate music for that said celebrity one time. <laughs> I get to the brick review at hand. Uh, I want to give like a small backstory as far as this drink review that I'm going into. So for those who are aware, I grew up in the 90s. I'm a 90s kid, early double zeros, teenager and all that. So one of the things that was really big during my youth in the late 90s, early double zeros was wrestling. You know, me personally, I, I'm not a wrestling fan. I never was. I did try to get in wrestling. I just couldn't. And I remember the uh, the WWF, WCW wars back in the um, late 90s. It was something like second, third, fourth, or fifth grade. Um, I remember the battles between Monday Nitro and, um, and Raw, WWF Raw. I know it's WWE now, but when I was coming up, it was called WWF. So I remember that. And then, like, I remember the Raw versus SmackDown debates. Like, we, like, either you team Raw or you team SmackDown. Either you're team NWO as far as WCW or you're team uh, D Generation X on WWF. You know, either you're, uh, either you're team WWF Attitude or you, you get the point. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, me personally, I never got into wrestling, and I'm kind of glad now because I remember wrestling was really big at the turn of millennium. And me personally, I despise a lot of things that are popular around the turn of millennium. So I just think it was kind of weak. And I always had the stigma like whoever was fans of wrestling in the late 90s and early double zeros were probably fans of the whole teen pop epidemic that was also going on around at the same time, you know. With the whole Backstreet Boys and Sync, uh, 98 Degrees, Westlife, Boys Zone, Britney, Christina, uh, Manny Moore, and all that. I, I compare it to that because anything that was big on the charts, if that if that corresponding pop culture thing was also big around that time, I despised it. So the only thing I did not despise that was really big in the late 90s was, was NBA basketball. But even then, that's when the NBA was real. That's when it was competitive. It didn't have this nonsense that it got going on now, you know, with the whole playing tournament and uh, was it an end season tournament? Like, come on, NBA, go back to we was in the nineties, man. When it was hardcore and real, and players actually want to beat each other to get to the NBA finals instead of having all these uh, players team up and just make it so one sided to where it's not even worth watching the season because you already know who's going to win it before the season start. And no, it's not going to be Lakers, so. Get out of here with that. Oh, and also, speaking of, um, oh, big up to the Texas Rangers, too. So, uh, they did win the World Series if I didn't have to say that yet. But anyways, uh, let's get on to this. So, um, I, I do know a little bit about, I do know somewhat about wrestling to where I know around the, um, turn of millennium when you talk about WWF attitude era. I do know the two biggest wrestlers at that time was Stone Cold and The Rock. And what's make this, which makes this so significant, uh, I do remember vividly, because my family members did watch the WrestleManias and all that. They was in the wrestling at the time. Uh, they watched wrestling, uh, WrestleMania, uh, the Royal Rumble and all that. And like, everybody was all together, so I was kind of forced to watch wrestling around the time. And even I, I was like, oh my God, not wrestling again. Put on some Monday night, put on Sunday night football. I want to see the Broncos obliterate the Kansas City Chiefs. You get me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one thing I did notice when it came to wrestling is like when uh, the Stone Cold was on the ring, um, a lot of time, and I thought this was really cool though. Um, when he'd be on the ring and and people would toss him beer, you know, cheers and stuff, and just <laughs> I thought that was pretty hilarious. And why is this significant? Because the beer review, the drink review, I'm going to review today. Because uh, we know Stone Cold is known for beer. Uh, Stone Cold actually has his own beer that is sold in stores. And I just happened to have seen it. 
one day, um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a drink of you off a of Stone Cold Steve Austin beer. So, I was oh, uh, almost broke my elbow just now. So today, we got Stone Cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull, and it's like three versions of this. Like, you got I got the American Lager, but it's also two other flavors at the bottom. So I'm gonna try them all. So bear, so yeah, just bear me. Um, we're gonna work on that. So, um, and this is from the El Segundo Brewing Company. Uh, El Segundo Brewing Company. <laughs> Uh, from ooh. Mm -hmm. it was from it was gonna, okay in Stratford, Connecticut, not Stanford, Connecticut, where my wife and kids was uh filmed at. Because the Damon Wayans, Tisha Campbell, uh, Jennifer Freeman, that was a great show back in the um, turn of millennium. We talking about Stratford, Connecticut. So you know, I like to check out some of the stuff on this uh, on these beers when I try them. The beer is the ultimate reward for a hard day's work. Brew with the best American grown barley and hops, broken skull American lager. Those down as easy as a three day weekend. <laughs> Cheers to those who are out there earn it. Earning it. So, and this, I think it's at 4.8. Uh, yep. It contains 4.8% alcohol. Alright, let's get on to it. This video's already six minutes long at this juncture as I'm recording. No, I gotta smell it. Yeah, there's no smell. It's kind of like avocado. Will it, will it have any taste to it? Let's find out. Ooh, my nose is. Now let's try it. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's maybe it's too lagerish for me, but it is not a bad beer. It just, it could, it could use a little tweak in order for that score to bump up. So right now I got to get a 7.5, you know, while I buy this again, I'm currently on the fence as far as why I buy this again or not. We'll have to see about that. So, um, but yeah. There you have it. So uh, that is the Stone Cold Steve. Was well, it's not the Stone Cold, but I just say Steve Austin's focus Cold. But let's be real, we all know the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Let's. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this edition of Eighth Foot Extra Drink Review. And even though I don't watch wrestling, I do remember a video game back on the Nintendo sixty four. It was a wrestling video game. When it's, I want to say it was Warzone, or it might be. It might be not. Yeah, it might be. I think it was Warzone. Um, to simplify, to uh, simplify what Stone Cold was saying, you know, he'd be like, stay away from me and all that. Well, how about this? If you're not a beer drinker, stay away from this beer. And that's the bottom line because A Fizzle said so. Hot y'all there.